let's get started then. So, previously on Dunjo and Dargo, uh, the group made their way to Tretosk, a city nestled within a basin that functionally serves as a crossroads, waypoint, and oasis from the trek across the desert landscape, all in one. It boasts the safety of numerous days without a bandit raid. Uh, mm. While there, you got your raptors situated and refreshed at the oasis and asked for the lay of the, lay of the land through a mild-mannered conversation followed by an awkward conversation <laughs> with uh, art dealer Nazev Monaco. Uh, learning that the bridge that allows you the easiest travel east along the sun's path has been partially destroyed. And while travel is still possible, the idea of being catapulted through the air by trebuchet caused you to seek out Demio's fool killer, the apparent person in charge. <clears throat> Gaining the information that this individual enjoys visiting the, uncle, the Uncle's Bluff public house, Zalia is back from her library excursion, pastiche back from a private run-in with Feather. You head there and chop it up with liberal use of Thieves' Camp, uh, much to Michaela and Zoe's confusion. Uh, pastiche was hailed by a dwarf on a cart where a dangerous game of what's in the box <laughs> resulted in pastiche destroying the box and spilling its contents so here we are pastiche is surrounded by various excavation tools up to and including a workbench that looks pretty serious as they all jiggle and shake and levitate, turning on the snake folk, I need everyone to roll initiative, which you've already done. Uh, so I'll roll for the animated objects. Yeah. Hiya. Whoa. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> you hear the, the ding of the 20, then the battle music kicks in. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. So. Indeed. Brum. As the objects close in on the snake folk in this menacing half circle, the uh, the wand gives like a like a shake, a jiggle, and a wobble, and a waggle. And by golly, something happens. <laughs> We're gonna find out. All okay. right. Immediately, at, right after the after the wand, <clears throat> just kind of like jiggles and like wangles. These there's like a puff and, and a sparkle and a glitter of uh, kind of like cerulean blue dust, and something very strange happens. Uh, something that hasn't happened in Corsair in a very long time. The bottom falls out of the sky and whoosh, it immediately starts raining. <laughs> oh. Um, in a very large radius. All over there. <laughs> I wonder if Zoas has seen it rain before. Probably will have it rain somewhere at least once. Probably. It does, it does rain in the hoots of some ventures. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so yeah, it is heavy rain. Uh, so everything is lightly obscured because of how like sudden and just torrential this rainfall is. Um, okay. And yeah, that happens. <laughs> cool. Next up is the table. Now this this workbench looks pretty serious as it moves up. It starts flying and flies upwards and then does like a somersault in the air and then comes down workbench top first against pastiche. <laughs> Flop. Did it just like kickflip it? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this very sturdy workbench just like hurdles through the air and just smashes into into pastiche. Um, a 24 hits pastiche. Are they going to do anything about it? Uh, do they have reactions? They test of their reflexes. Uh, they cannot do anything about it. Uh, 24 hits and then shabam as this 
table comes in, or just vertically clocks the pastiche across the side of the face and deals a whopping 17 damage. Wow. I mean, it's a big table. It's a big table. It's a sturdy table. This table looks serious. Hey. And the table is now floating in the air. Cool. <laughs> Flying table. Uh, which brings us to Pastiche and Zoaz. <laughs> Zoaz, what would you like to do? As uh, Pastiche is kind of like stumbling, holding their head from getting clocked with the table. So, so if I recall correctly, we heard a loud crash. Yes. Is this a window? Yes. Okay, so Zoaz like whips his head around and sees what's going on through the through the window. Like he sees flashes of movement and then a table flies through the air and slams pastiche across the face. So I looks at the table just to make sure he hasn't been drinking. Like, did I forget? Have I have I had too much to drink w without knowing? And then is going to push away, knock over the stool that he was sitting on, and start running outside. Okay. Well, Zoez is running outside, you hear a as Pastiche uh, swirls their, butt, their brush around themselves at their feet, and gets a little wad of ink, and then just kind of like flicks it off the ground, and a giant blob of, of vibrant uh, vibrant paint uh, glumps right over here zoop still a little wet still a little soaked but all these nerds are going to make a <laughs> constitution save throw zoop 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 zoop, zoop, zoop. Hey, and this time, uh, <laughs> Pastiche managed to make it so that none of his allies, none of their allies, were in the radius. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing them all wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's roll some damage here. As Dang. this very loud noise, crack, crack. I wish I took a thirteen. Let's see. So. Wait, do these have... Do, 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 do. Okay, no. Kaboom. Uh, I think these guys are special. No, nope, just kidding. Okay, the broom takes actually half damage because it made it. Um, go ahead with the, the rest of your turns of us while I'm just dealing out damage. Uh, is Zoaz able to... Well, yeah, so I was able to see past this, the corner of this building, or is it only the table that he'd be able to see? Uh, the table is actually here. Uh, you can see the uh, table. Okay. Uh, okay. The table will have cover if you do anything direct to it. That requires a lot of sight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to try and Sacred Flame it. So I was going to beseech the will of Selene to help him defeat tables and <laughs> tools? Question mark? Oh, Selene, help me. <laughs> help me put these tools to rest. <laughs> Time to put the tools back in the box. Uh-huh. Okay, and then where's the... All the, the and they gain no tester. benefit from cover. For... All right, with a we're doing it on the table. Let's see how dexterous this yes. table is. Uh, fourteen. <laughs> so uh... yeah, it it uh, is. Oh, very dexterous. A hefty roll. <clears throat> it is rocked by this thunderous cacophony that pastiche produces and then appears somewhere else um the 
What's your saving throw DC? Is it 14? 14. It... Okay. Uh, the uh, 14 saves then. Yes. And it takes no damage. Okay. My bad. And as the table's just rolling through the air from the sonic impact, the sacred flame unfortunately goes wide. Okay. Anything else, Oaz? Uh, no, that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, Pastiche will move out of the rain. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, with this, the swarm of chisels is going to seek out the snake folk. see like this mass of chisels just floating out floating around in this perfect sphere if you were to look at all of the trails of, uh, of motion some of them have fallen to the ground but uh, this chair is going to dart up to Zalia and spin around and try to uh, make her take a seat please have a seat okay uh, seven. You... <laughs> no, they just like gonna you know, retract like her her gut like back. <laughs> <laughs> the chair is just going to kind of like fly around you for a bit, just trying to get at your legs to make you kind of buckle and sit down on it. But you are too quick, and you are <laughs> very efficient at changing your extremity is to get away from this goofy chair. Uh, there's an excavation brush. It is going to try to powder your face. Alright. Eleven. <laughs> uh, what face? <laughs> That's precisely why it misses, yes. <laughs> it, it, goes, it goes towards, like, this your uh, your your head, and then Zelia shape changes out of the way. There is nothing. It's just like a, it's just like a giant gaping like sandworm maw that opens up right in front of it. <laughs> you can you can see the excavation brush kind of like skid to a stop in midair. It's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa wait. Uh, which brings us to Chuman and Twig. Chuman will like to go after you, Twig. Okay. You can see him kind of like take up a post next to the window. And uh, draw his bow. Just make sure I have this. I mean the commotion. Twig is gonna print to the door. Is it closed right now? Uh, the door is closed. Twig's gonna kick it open. <laughs> Are these like saloon doors? You know? yeah. yeah, they're saloon doors. <laughs> uh, kicks it open right. and is just greeted by this downpour of rain and all this furniture just flying around. <laughs> you can hear the the sounds of the three gentlemen jeering on top of these barrels and like boxes. Oh, what's this now? Uh, seeing Zelia fend off a couple of them, he's gonna run across the tops of these tables and attack the uh, the chair. Okay. Wait, that was, uh, there we go. Okay. Give it the old boom. Is that an 11 to hit? Let's see. Uh, no, that automatically rolled uh, damage. Okay. 17 to hit. 17 to hit, that hits. All right. Five, or nine plus 11. Yikes. You carve into this chair, and by golly, it is sp splinters are going everywhere. You've destroyed the back. It's basically just a cushion <laughs> now. <laughs> um, that'll be it for Twig. Okay, Chuman knocks an arrow in his bell, then goes to release it through the window. Realize that the window is all glass, and then will continue moving towards the door. And we'll fire a delightful shot from the bow. 
uh, we're going to attack with a very large, <laughs> the very large table. We're gonna we're gonna shoot an arrow into the table. Let's see if we can hit the broad side of the barn. Absolutely. Three attacks. Nice. Yeah, yikes. All right. Uh, let's see here. The first and the third one hit. The second one does not. So damage. The two and knocks an arrow. <laughs> Kind of like makes that little wooden springy noise as the arrow slams into it, and then this one, this one coming up. By golly, this one goes nuts. Oh my oops. God, Jesus! <laughs> oh, what's the give me two extra? Oh, I'll remember that next time. Okay, so seven point eleven. Okay. Uh, 7 plus 11, 18. Uh, plus 2 is uh, 20. Okay, so 20 damage to the table. Nice. Um, with the third arrow, Chuman knocks. Kind of like squints an eye. Lowers his goggles. And then does the, the excellent Robin Hood. Splits his own arrow. And sends another arrow shaft slamming into the table. That was some serious damage. As the table explodes in a splinters, 20 is enough to do it, actually. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> cool. It had 19, uh, 19 health. So, yeah, Chuman's Onslaught has destroyed the table. Oh, not the wand. The wand comes back to life. Oh, my God, it wanders. Table goes flying, explodes into splinters from the impact of Chuman's ferocious attack. I thought the 11 was damage from Booming Blade. Didn't you have advantage? Yeah, but the first roll was a, was also a miss. Oh. Uh, I just ignored the the 11 and just took the advantage roll. Okay. Uh, let's see. Which brings us to the broom. Time to sweep up some nerds. <laughs> as, it, as it flies forward and gives a huge arc to attempt to sweep everybody in its range. Oh my goodness. Become clean. No. <laughs> uh, against Alia and against Twig. <laughs> Zelia, so you see this broom coming from a mile away. As it readies its attack against you, you just kind of <laughs> sit on the cushion for a moment just to duck out of the way and then stand back up. <laughs> but unfortunately, Twig, this thing's admiring coming. His, this thing's admiring coming. his handiwork on the chair. Yeah. You can, you can put, that in a, <laughs> put that in, in an IKEA showcase and then <laughs> plop! Here comes a broom. <laughs> Five bludgeoning damage. Which brings Ow. us to Michaela and Zalia because the knife is done though. Um. Michaela takes her drink. Everyone's like bolted up and gone up. She like takes it with her, leisurely walks over. <laughs> um, uh, to the door frame and just sort of like stands there. Leaning against like the like the wall, um, the what do you call that part of the door? Door frame. Yeah, I guess just the door frame. Yeah, um, like propping it open, like holding a hand out underneath the rain. Like it's not supposed to rain. It's not rainy season for another in the month or so. And just you know, casually watches what's happening because this is funny. <laughs> Understandable. Tell me the story. Uh, I, I don't know how to angle this template, but it's going to be pointing uh, southwest. Okay. Yeah, to get all of them? Yep. Makes sense to me. Yeah, that totally works. I, I would like to angle it this direction. Um, yeah. Let's see. If you mouse over the template, uh, I think you can... And Yeah, sorry. If you click it and then hold control, and then you can scroll wheel. 
clicked it. I'm holding control. Scroll wheel is doing nothing. Oh no. That's oh. fine. Oh, you have to just yeah, click it once to yeah. have it selected, and then you can't like click and hold it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Dude. Yeah, you can get everybody. Because it originates okay. from any kind of point. So yeah. No twig, you don't get to back off. <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> Let's see, to get everybody. Yeah, there you go. Zoop zoop. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even expecting to get the knife, honestly, but sure, I'll take that. Yeah, you'll actually get the knife. Yikes! Bang! Tell me, we weave me a tale of how Zalia burns all of these wooden things. <laughs> Remember the uh, fanworm pit in her face? There's gonna be some fire kind of just spewing out of that in reaction to all that. Very cool. Is that the noise that Zalia makes? No, that's the noise that Sigma makes when she's starving to death. I see. Okay, the broom fails the saving throw. How much damage do we take? 13? This broom and it's, is... It's fire, if it's relevant. It's also half on success. It is relevant. This this broom is toast. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, the brush... Do -do -do -do. Makes a save. Sorry, it's not a... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, and then the chair. Where's the chair? Here's the chair. The chisels are very dexterous. <laughs> uh -huh. Very dexterous. <laughs> but you get them all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that fire is hot and ignites any flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried, so everything just... It, it, it's, it's wood, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after, like, you know, wiping the ash off of it, off of that, like, out of her new mouth, she's just gonna walk over here and grab the wand, just snatch it out of the air. Okay. Nice ultra kill. Uh, it, it, is, it is an action to grapple a wand. An object. She's just object interacting. <laughs> they are technically creatures at this point. <laughs> Fuck up. Look at their thoughts, Jack. I'm, I'm sorry. They're creatures. You you go out to grab for the wand, and the wand is kind of like whizzing through the air, just bzz, 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 bzz. and then uh, as you go out to snatch for it, it kind of like twirls, like moves backward a little bit, like in its in its space, and then. Bzz, there's this kind of like electrical noise as it gives you a waggle. We're gonna find out what happens. 58. What does a 58 do? <laughs> oh yeah, the rain stops. By the way, just as so as suddenly <laughs> as it started, this flash rain just it just the curtain <laughs> the the curtain of water is gone. And everything is dry once again. In its place. Uh, what is it, 20 feet? <clears throat> In its place is just this inky black hole of can't see nothing. Uh, Zilli, the area around you just goes completely blank in o just opaque darkness. Uh, washes over you and your sight is your, your sight leaves you and uh all of you watch as zelia just disappears into this darkness never to be found again ostensibly <laughs> ostensibly and it's just usual for zelia no no it brings us up to pastiche and zoas yeah go ahead zoas uh well uh, I guess Zoas would try to light up the the area with fairy fire. Okay. He's going to try to cast within or on that that sort of dome of darkness. 
Sone. Please, allow me to see so that I may save my allies. Let's see. Oh, and I, I suppose he should come around the corner so that he can actually see. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Let's see. What does this do? Each object within range is outlined in light. Any creature in the area. Bum, 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 bum. All right. As you beseech Selene and you send your divine magics with a K into this area, you can feel the darkness. Kind of, sorry, not. You can feel the darkness kind of like suck in the 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 illumination energy, and it just it just slurps it, never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. The way I imagine it is like you see how the on the template like the corners of the square are poking out mm -hmm. like very small objects in those corners are being outlined but nothing within the sphere correct okay that's pretty cool so as goes hmm and is going to run over and say Zelia are you okay in there before realizing that maybe he's not going to get an answer from <laughs> Zalia. <laughs> you absolutely can hear this, and I think going forward, um, I'll let you guys use reaction to take the improvise action. So if you choose to respond, you can. Okay. You hear some... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Pastiche over here. Looking a little wide-eyed from being surrounded by excavation tools. And slapped by a table. <laughs> and, and just zonked by a table. Uh, takes a few tepid steps forward. And is going to ponder the situation because we can't see in there. <laughs> Uh, and all of this requires sight. Pastiche will ready an action. Uh, is going to ready casting a spell uh, for the time when Pastiche can see uh, an enemy that is an enemy. Brings us to tune and twig. And I guess thank you. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the next us. four of you, actually. Yes, you're right. Bang. Group initiative. Valia, Valia continues to attempt to grab the wand. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> go ahead and roll me some athletics. All right. Do you really good at this? Okay. The wand, after it like waggling itself and casting its magics at you, uh, tries to actually legitimately just brute force its way. It just like you grab onto it and it tries to like you can feel it straining against mm -hmm. your grasp and then just pop, it flies out. Hmm. All right, okay, the noid. I think Mikhail is just still chilling. Just, you know, yeah. taking a nice sip of her drink. Yeah, Mikhail, it, it's an odd thing, you know, just it started raining, now it stopped raining. Now you now there's just this large sphere that you can't see into. You might be a little inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows at this point? People Wasn't have vision on a drunk. Yeah. It's been a long, you know, travel. Like it it has been a long day. Just finished traveling. Bottom yeah. big shark. You know, I was taking it easy. She believes Zalia got this. You can you can hear the the three men that are on the barrels just like hollering and trying to trying to bet on what happens next. Oh, uh, next it's gonna be a cactus. No, a a, a balloon. No, and there's gonna be sheep parades. <laughs> Uh, Twig is going to go up to the 
the edge of this darkness and just like like feel at the ground with a claw to make sure it's still there. Yeah, it, it is absolutely still there. It is um, the same temperature, like the nothing's really changed, it's just there is kind of like a, a sphere that you can almost touch. Um, but yeah, you, you go in, just it's like your hand kind of disappears into this darkness, but you bring it back. There's your talons, all feathers accounted for. Minus the ones that weren't there in the first place. Twig is going to light a candle. Okay. Well, now that the rain is soft. Yeah. yeah. And after lighting it, he's just going to like hold it forward into the darkness and see if that lights it up. Okay. You take a... a a cautious step forward on this on the suddenly soggy ground like the wet sand everywhere <clears throat> and you hold the candle in it just immediately poof, snuffs out oh Dude just like shakes his head and says uh good luck in there Zelia <laughs> You hear some slightly more annoyed. <laughs> Let's see here. What's Chuman gonna do? Chuman is gonna knock an arrow to his longbow and then just point the bow and get ready to release the arrow at the sphere. And you hear, ah, that's not going to work. And then. Uh, shoulder the longbow, kind of like drape it across his uh, midsection there. Tanks out the dagger. Advances on the on the noises that he hears. And uh, tries to attack like the, the wispy noises that the wand is making? Question mark? <laughs> Unfortunately, misses. Let's see. Which brings us back around to the wand. This, this menace. <laughs> the new big bad. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to. You mean Zaylia's new shiny that's fighting her? <laughs> I'm being her new shiny. <laughs> Uh, the wand is going to uh, fly 15 feet in the air <laughs> and is going to fly... How big is this bubble of darkness? It is a 15 feet radius bubble. Okay, so it's still technically in it? Yes. I wouldn't go away because it's, oh, it's not going to waggle, I think. And it's going to... Oops. And it's going to go over here. And it will waggle once more. Waggle, waggle. We'll see what happens with this party. A direct 40. Ooh. <laughs> okay. uh, let's find out on the next exciting episode of... <laughs> Of, uh, oh. does go away. <laughs> but what happens is uh, yet another very loud crackle, not unlike the thunder step, except this one is accompanied by a giant flash of light as it crackles forward from the wand straight into the ground. It actually just kind of like impacts and makes a crater. Just rock, sand, uh, all sorts of Hi. stuff just go everywhere as it casts Lightning Bolt. <laughs> oh my god. Did it hit anyone? Where is it casting it on? Uh, here, it, it's casting it directly at the ground at Zalia and Chuman. Oh. Let's see, let me get rid of this darkness. Zoop. Alright. Yeah, a 40 is, is you cast Lightning Bolt. Well, well I guess. <laughs> yep. 
All right. Uh, let's see. For Zalia and Chumin, I need a dexterity saving throw. The DC is 15. Dex save. Load roll <laughs> on that damage roll. All right. <laughs> the lightning bolt <laughs> rocks from the from the wand and just crashes into the ground. You, there is a slightly fried Chumin and Zalia and also standing in a crater as this wand just continues to kind of like buzz around in the air. And uh, yeah, 21 lightning damage to the both of you. Unless you have something to say about it. Uh, Zalia has something to say about it and is hissing very loudly. <laughs> Pastiche might have something to say about it, too. <laughs> Pastiche does have something to say about it, as the reaction comes into play, and they ready... Uh, cut, cut. Wait. Sorry, just kidding. I think you're cutting out a little bit. Uh, I was cutting out a little bit and I was nervously okay. fitting or fiddling with uh, the mute button. <laughs> I see. Oh, the mute switch rather. Uh, so here comes a uh, here comes an acid splash. We're gonna splash mm -hmm. acid just flick uh, from the large paintbrush that pastiche carries with them a little glob. Oh! Goodness. Fails. Unfortunate. The acid flips into the air and just pelts the, the wand as it's buzzing, flitting about. Takes damage. Which brings us to the rest of the party. <laughs> what are you going to do about this menace that is getting more dangerous by the moment? I still have a mage hand, right? Uh, mm -hmm. mage hand is not concentration, so yes, you do. Okay, she's gonna grab it with the mage hand. Okay. Uh, may these are creatures. Mage uh, grapple is technically an attack, but it's fun, so I'll allow it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be her. It wouldn't be her athletic though, would it? Um, what's your spell DC? We'll do that. Fifteen. I, th I think that's appropriate. As it's buzzing around, the magic res it resonates with the magic of the hand, flying upwards to grab it, and the one attempts to perform some evasive maneuvers. Not a chance. <laughs> it zigs in the mage, and the mage hand also zigs in the same direction, and it is now grappled. That's your action to control the mage hand, I believe. Yep. Is there anybody around that looks like they're ca like casting anything? Uh, make a perception check. Twelve. Um, there is not anyone that looks like they're doing kind of like casting motions or like mm -hmm. doing like finger tutting to control mm -hmm. something. Um, you see the three gentlemen. Uh, to your right, that looked just mm -hmm. looked like they're very entertained. Um, yeah, they're just the audience. Let's see, a twelve. Let me see my drink. It looks tasty. Take another sip. Yeah. Uh, that is all you see with a twelve. As you take another sip, let's knock another one back. Like, you got this, Zalia. Just, you know, chills. Okay. Zoaz so will notice that the time is right. Ah, good job, Zalia! <laughs> Zalia is kind of hissing and smoking in like two different ways. <laughs> Yikes. Ow! Yikes! Great. So, yeah. I thought about that. Yeah. 
That's a good roll. Really, <laughs> you watch as a ball of radiant fire descends from the sky and impacts the wand and just turns it to ashes in your mage hand. The ashes of the wand slowly flitter down and uh yeah she's just kind of angry in general now Schumann and, and Zelia are lightly coated in burnt wood all right crisis averted you hear behind you Roaring, ruckus applause. Woo, yeah, do it again! <laughs> <laughs> From the three gentlemen, of course. The looks over, raises a scaly eyebrow. One of them falls and off a barrel. Back. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Rai, by the way, you are muted. You... Oh, no, no longer. Never mind. Uh, Zoaz will walk over, seeing that... Uh, Human got roasted by a lightning bolt and is going to cast Cure Wounds on him. Absolutely. Bo both of these. Alright. Uh, oh, well, that's a... <laughs> Shaken by seeing a table leap through the air and smack someone, Zoaz can't exactly concentrate. Uh, it... It's, it's alright to... Uh or the table is uh, would throw anyone off. So uh, sheepishly nods. Uh, indeed. Thankfully, I'm not too injured, so uh, I should manage with what you have. So as nods. Michaela turns to the three. Um, men uh, watching the spectators and just like uh, do uh, furniture and tools normally get up and start f attacking random uh, travelers in this town? No, nope, that's what makes it so good. That's never happened before. Was that you? What was that you were doing? Can you do it again? Takes another sip. The dude is like on the ground and he just kind of like pours the alcohol into his mouth just like from <laughs> for, like he holds the bottle up and just little, little water falls into his mouth. Oh. None of you saw what caused any of that. She just kind of says to the general anyone out does shrugs uh, no I I saw nothing well, I doubt any of us would have seen anything outside of those three those stumbling three and Astetian Zalia after mentioning Zalia eyes go to her she just gets down <laughs> kneels and then sits and then just lays on the no. ground no she's like a she's like an angry cat she's just flopping oh, okay. <laughs> she doesn't have a tail right now to flick but if she did it would be <clears throat> walks over sort of like kicks the dirt uh, like the, the dust of the wand with a foot like, are you, like, angry, angrily, like, looking over it right now or something? Or... Basically, yes. She had a shiny, and the shiny hurt her, and the little shiny is gone. <laughs> uh, I mean, Juman, could you... I mean, it's dust, but... Uh, any chance of mending that? Uh, well... Uh, I can see, but not entirely sure just yet. 
the DM just quietly shaking his head and with a grin. <laughs> Not... Jimin looks to the DM. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> mending, 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 mending allows you to repair like breaks or, or cuts or like severances. Um, this is dust and ash. Every mote of ash must be individually mended. <laughs> it, it, it has and been, it has been disintegrated. Uh huh. It's more like half mended as like a jest. Uh, uh, it seems the sacred flame uh, did much more than just a little bit of damage. Uh, I can't fix something like this. Goes and looks at anything else, just looks at the ashes of burnt <laughs> and then the waterlogged furniture. Yeah. Smoldering at this point. Is this cart still here? No. Okay. Uh, the, the cart is not there. Okay. This is definitely one of the stranger things I've seen assault people. I must say, in all my years... Rather ineffective. <laughs> in all my years guiding people through the savannah and the desert, I uh, have not seen that. Uh, I must say, though, it did not seem particularly aimed at uh, an attempt on their lives, indeed, just... Uh, well, either way, the situation's taken care of now. Hmm. Though, and I suppose we did figure out what we came here for, but, uh... I'll be honest with you, I'm not particularly interested in being catapulted across a canyon. No, I don't think that is an option for us or our raptors. I would agree. I'd rather keep my feet planted on the ground. I suppose we could technically go down, through, and then up. That might also be not much of an option for our raptors. Valia will sit, like sit up partially, part like it, it, she's twist. She's like breaking her spine. It's whatever. It's fine. Um, and just kind of snap a minor illusion, just to show, just to demonstrate like herself flying around with wings. But then put like a pile of gold on top of that, and then she'll sit back down. So as blinks. What? <laughs> um. Well, uh, they did mention those snake apparitions that were preventing the bridge from being built, rebuilt. That is. Uh, yeah. I suppose we should probably try and figure out more information of where. Well, they the. Barkeep said um, that, uh, it was in the canyon, was it? didn't they? Mm -hmm. Barkeep and I've heard uh, talk among other people in the town that, uh, that there had been something from, uh, from the gorge itself that broke the bridge. So, it seems mm -hmm. pretty clear. Find the culprit to go down. What exactly is, is this? Like a, like a small like uh, stakes? Uh, or are they like on the map? You know, like yeah, they're like there, there's yeah. some small like kind of wooden stake or logs that are driven to the ground. It gives the effect of mm -hmm. something of a like a very small like shin high fence. Mm -hmm. uh, they've just got some like grasses or like <laughs> yeah, or honestly they're, they're weeds like, growing. Sized. Yeah. If they're log size, Michaela's gonna sit on them. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
gonna like sit down, get comfortable. Well, so it seems like we'll be stuck here for a few days. Indeed. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps after resting, we should take care of whatever that apparition is. Hmm. Though I don't believe I'd be hard. I'd be surprised if. Uh, it would be faster to wait for the bridge to be built than to find an alternative way around after taking care of it, regardless. Hmm. That is a good point. It's not like they can just suddenly snap a bridge into existence once the problem's gone. Oh. I mean, to go all the way around it, that would be... A lot of quite, travel. Quite the task, quite, yes. Quite the detour. Zoaz has like a hand to like a hand to his forehead, just like getting a headache thinking about what kind of uh trouble they could get into on a trip like that. Hmm. Honestly that would end up taking who knows what the delay that what would happen in the delay yes then might as well just wait for the bridge, honestly. But yeah, indeed, that is probably what we will have to do. Mm. Well, <laughs> I suppose. Could you lift a raptor? Wild thought. Just actually, never mind. It's dumb. <laughs> so as looks at Michaela and thinks for a moment, I, to be honest, I've never tried. It's not often that <laughs> I is. consider lifting a rafter. She sort of like swirls her drink and is like, hmm. how long could you theoretically sustain your walking on the air? Could you hold something? Zoaz. <laughs> Would you be able to? <laughs> Z <laughs> Zoaz thinks for a moment. I suppose. It's fun exactly to think about Exactly one things. minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just fun to, to theorize such silly concepts. Um, <laughs> but I don't any think ideas I from the rest of you? Vaylia oh. is going to do to recreate the exact same minor illusion, but like half-heartedly. I don't know. Illusory like... Vaylia is flying back and forth, having the time of her life. Yeah, you can see Illusory <laughs> Zalia just wings, doing somersaults, half gainers, just swooping up, swooping down. Makes happy noises in the illusion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose if you want to get tossed, you can do so. The what? <laughs> illusion <laughs> alien is holding a bag of gold. <laughs> you want? No one is stopping you from doing it for fun, I suppose, or traveling on your own. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think I quite understand what this one is trying to convey, Zelia. It's gonna continue flopping on the floor, annoyed. Um, kind of try to sputter for a little bit. And then Illusory Zelia is gonna open up her pockets and just like fly as they're gonna fly out. Want like, du dust cloud flies. Yeah. Lint ball. Uh-huh. Hey, you could fly if you had enough money? Thumbs up. <laughs> Buzz. Oh. Just... What? How? Like, a, a, a spell? 
Thumbs up. <laughs> How much would you need? Uh, let me check my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Zalia can take us all across the canyon, and all she needs is the three numbers <laughs> on the back of our credit card. Uh, 60. The no it's gonna be 6 0. Show up in the, exactly. in the illusion. 6, six zero. 0. 60 gold? Or 60 platinum? Like what? Gold. Uh, she'll, it'll, well, okay, she won't say that. She'll make, it'll just, the 60 will turn gold. Oh, 60 gold, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. Twig is just lost in thought, imagining the entire party riding on Zelia's shoulders. <laughs> Takes out six platinum. And just like holds it out of her bag and just like holds it in her hand. Would this be suffice? Uh, and I will so come back around the back of Zelia's head. <laughs> The rest of Valia's face will follow it. <laughs> Not her head, but... I see. Just like imagining the code. It's like an animation in the Lego movie where, like, the uh -huh. head moves. <laughs> so, like, the yep. face just kind of slides across it. Yep. Mm -hmm. She will then stand up, you know, with her head on backwards, basically. Mm -hmm. And break her left arm, left elbow to give you a thumbs up. Hmm. Yeah. Does this also mean you can carry the raptors as well? She'd think for a moment and then she's gonna snap her fingers and make a minor illusion of a winged raptors. Hmm. Now is it? 60 gold per person and she raptor? Shakes, she shakes her head. Shakes head left, right, or horizontally or vertically? Horizontally, but she wouldn't know the difference. Fair enough. <laughs> Zoaz is going to say, well, while we figure that out, I suppose I'm going to go find Korokan and fill him in on what has happened and what we're thinking of doing. Well, it's better than the catapult. Anything is better than the catapult in Zoas. It <laughs> wa starts wandering off. Are you actually giving her the money? <laughs> I mean, Michaela's just holding it in her hand currently, like palm up. It's just like a stack of platinum. <laughs> like a, uh, I mean, a stack of six platinum. Zalia will reach out a hand. <laughs> and, have you ever used this spell before? Big head. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, things like almost let uh, Perhaps I should. We should wait until the actual spell is cast. Bailey gets visibly frustrated and like starts scrabbling. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. What time of day is it currently? Was it like midday? It is in the afternoon. It's maybe like. Mm, look up. Wonder, wonder how it started raining, because there isn't a cloud in the sky. Uh, but you can kind of ascertain that it's around mid-afternoon. Oh, so. Sorry, uh, if you can, could you like say that again? Sorry. So, in in Zalia, very mm -hmm. overly quiet, very hesitant, very choppy speech. I need the money to transcribe the spell. I know it already. Oh. Uh, well, tentatively, sort of um, hand it over. Like extend the hand to you. Thalia will give you a big smile, although she looks a little tired. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. And Mr. Excel, how, how much? What? What exactly do I need to do to uh, 
transcribe it? You just said 150 in my notes. Yeah, it's 150 gold uh, because it's it's uh -huh. 50 gold per level of the spell, and yep. I think it's a number of hours equal to the level of the spell as well. Uh, sorry, okay. sorry, two hours per level of the spell. Okay. Um, so six hours, 150 gold um, for a third level spell, of course. And then mm -hmm. the cost represents material component, blah, 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 that you expend and you experiment with the spell to master it, as well as like the fine inks that you need to record it, blah, blah, blah. Um, mm -hmm. And then once you've spent this time and money, you can prepare it just like the other spells. So you'll need to also prepare the spell after a, okay. after a long rest. So Thalia will basically turn Michaela and um, she will minor illusion just snap tomorrow text just floating in the midair like clawed out of the ether mm. and then we'll okay. walk off and hit the town um sure <laughs> i guess tomorrow uh probably morning would probably be best if we're trying to travel she'd like kind of say <laughs> as you're walking yeah. away yep Besides, we could all use some a little bit of rest. To make sure that we're fully ready for our for tomorrow. Michaela like downs the last of her drink. Yes, so I suppose I suppose so. What little rest we can get. And we're back on the road, hopefully. Provided the spell goes well. A spell right. she's never cast before. And she like puts her hands on her knees, kind of grunts, gets up, and goes to get another drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get another drink. Um, yeah. <laughs> Join me if you wish. I... I have a few things to think about, so I'll probably join her for a drink. What about you, Twig? Um, I think I might want to just walk around a bit and get my bearings on this town before we head out. Understood. Seems like the yearling goes well suited for this town, so. Twig nods. I assume we'll be staying here tonight? I believe so. Since we won't be moving anywhere for until tomorrow. Then I'll meet the rest of you later on tonight. Hello. Good. Have a good night. And... Human looks at... Uh, Thayla's already gone. Uh, what is Pastiche doing? Pastiche is kind of just standing there. Um, they haven't really said anything. They've just been kind of staring off uh, to the east side of the building. Um, just inconspicuously. They haven't looked like they've tried to enter the conversation or anything. You can see kind of like their uh, fists are balled up, but other than that, standing straight, just looking maybe like into an alleyway or like looking around the town. Oh, sorry, city. <laughs> it's a difference. Sorry, family stepped in. <laughs> All good. Pastiche, since you've had a rough day so far, on the looks of yourself, you care to join us for a drink, or we be resting for the night? Mm. Tension kind of snaps to you, Juman, and you can see Pastiche's pink eyes lock with yours. Yes, I think it would be good to travel in numbers, yes. It was that dwarf. That 
Dwarf is the cause. Or the one that. Oh, actually, I don't remember a dwarf. He was sitting in the cart here. He asked me what was in the box. He played his game, and then all this was in the box. Hmm. Have you seen this dwarf before, or is this your first time? No, I have not. Interesting. I suppose we'll have to keep an eye out for another dwarf, just in case he tries this similar prank. Yes, I I will stay with you. Kind of exhales. Maybe I should go with Zelia in case something like this happens again. If that's the case, you might wish to catch up to her. And I believe she's already left. Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so he's gonna give Pastiche, uh, Pastiche and Truman a wave and start heading off to try and find Zelia. Okay. Easy enough to catch up to. So, Zoaz, I need you... You're looking for a Korakon, right? Yes. Okay. I need you to roll a survival check. Let's see how good you are at finding crabs. Selene, so, guide me to crabs. <laughs> Pretty good at finding crabs. <laughs> Keep wow. crab music. You find the all-you-can-eat. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> crab bake. Not that kind of crab. All right. Korakon, no! Let's see here. So looking around, it, it takes you maybe about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Because Korkon is apparently a, a difficult Aldania to find. <laughs> and it is at the Oasis that you happen upon Gorakon, you decide to check here since it's where most of the merchants seem to be congregating. And uh -huh. uh, you can see him just kind of like just kind of poking around, like looking around. He's just he's just walking along the water's edge. Ah, Gorakon. Ah. Yeah, 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 hello. So, as, you know, waves him down and says, uh, We. Well, we found out about getting across the canyon. Uh, though, I don't believe any of us are interested in the method laid out. Supposedly, they have a catapult set up to sling people across. <laughs> that would be a, a mighty ride, Joash. But I'm with you. <laughs> I'm not made for flying, hurtling through the air. <laughs> Zoraz nods and says, uh, In that case, it is most likely that we are going to be spending a couple of days here. Uh, our group will probably be heading down into the canyon to see what caused the incident in the first place. Uh, of course, I don't expect you to join us. So, uh, I suppose find a place to stay and keep yourself busy for the next few days. And we will let you know when we're getting going. If there is a way across the canyon, Joash, we must take it. This parcel must be delivered to Zozoray with all haste. We've been hmm. we've been sending pl spending plenty of days in towns. Zozoray's frowns. Ah, I. 
I suppose so. Well, uh... I suppose I'll find the others and inform them, but... I don't think any of them are going to be interested in... ...being catapulted across the canyon. I... Myself, I... least of all. I'm sorry, I don't mean to complain. I'm just... No, no, it's... I understand. We have been taking a somewhat slower pace than I suppose most people would... ...would be happy with. I'm merely... ...a little on edge right now, George. It's important we get the delivery. But it's also important we have the delivery. I seem to have misplaced my box. Ah, uh, the stammers from it. I, I, I believe you should have led with that. You misplaced the box. You had you opened with your own conversation topic. I politely waited, just like any <laughs> Aldani would. Ah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's somewhere around here on the water's edge. I'm just misplacing it. Or maybe one of the raptors kicked it in the water or something. If it's there, I'll find it. <laughs> that's that's my home turf. Says oh. nods, but says, I, I see. Uh, I suppose... Uh, Oh, that's not good. Uh, keep looking. I will go find the others and inform them. Oh, I definitely will, Zoaz. <laughs> it is... <laughs> this thing is more important than you or I. Zoaz tilts his head a bit, but is going to uh, start jogging off. Kind of like cast a glance over your head, and Gorkon is looking, just kind of like head down, looking along the water there, just kind of like poking his raptor, <laughs> just peering in. Okay. Uh, let's see here, Michaela and Juman, you two return to. Uh, Uh, dun, 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 dun. return to Chu. Sorry, <laughs> you don't return to Chuman. Uh, you two return to um, uh, the bar. You are you are greeted by the barkeep. Gives you a nice clean in a glass with a with a rag. It's a clean rag, and and it's a clean glass. Gives you a nod. Kind of pushes up his small circular glasses. What was all the commotion out there? I could not see. I have all these clear coves to eyeball. Any gestures towards the room? Apparently some rowdy furniture. Caleb shrugs. <laughs> rowdy furniture? Well, if they if they wanted in, they could just come in and pull up a seat. We don't have a doorman. <laughs> I think they were the seat, actually. Hi. The table, and I think there was a burned uh, remains of a broom, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I'll have to. I'll have to clean it up a little bit later. Uh, did you see who it all belonged to? Uh, there's no crying beef around here, but if someone uh, wants beef, we will <laughs> certainly give them such a, a choice cut. Michaela's like tilts her head. Looking um, up aliasms. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Human just Mediums are odd. Sir. Uh, but I didn't. Is that. I have no idea. 
who or what to do any of it. Uh, it was just sort of an entertaining. I mean, most of it was on the floor in pieces by the time I even got to the door. Fights are usu usually pretty quick. Over, over and done with in just a few moments. Uh, yes. It's all dust in the sand now. Hmm. Where? Luckily, I think there's a, a few things, well, the fewest things that I once killed won't start walking again. A uh, curse of wandering has a nasty habit of making people and other things get back up. <laughs> Looks like <laughs> since it is furniture this time, uh, even though they have legs, I don't think they work like that. Michaela kind of like leans back in her chair to try and like glance through the door to see if anything's moving. Nope, they still look down. Good to know, I suppose. Thank you very much. I, I do appreciate uh, acting as a bouncer for uh, for today's afternoon. Uh, what, what can I what, what can I get for you? Let me get you a drink. You said you were. Uh, what was your previous business before uh, our conversation was cut so short? Well, we were just trying to understand what the proposed method of crossing the now broken but now inaccessible gorge was upon learning that it is throwing oneself off a catapult uh, we realized that was a non-option it gives a laugh huh? <laughs> i guess you have any loggers she says like pushes a glass towards him i uh, yes he takes your glass and Indeed, that is uh, part of it. It's very amusing to tell people and watch their reaction. Uh, you just pours your your, your longer, um, slides it down the small bar section to you, uh, and then nods at Juman. Uh, but continues talking. I mean, there there is more to it. Uh, Demios has a it's an exciting plan. Uh, <laughs> really, we should charge it, charge administration uh, because it is something of a uh, <laughs> something of a happy ride. Uh, but it would appear we've managed to potentially procure our own sort of ride. Ah, splendid! So, jump would be though. But Kayla kind of like. Um, feels her now lighter her six platinum lighter uh bag um wait. zoe did take it the, the platinum right yes okay let me actually i can actually trade you that and see. yeah she now feels that it's like, yeah, perhaps your method it might honestly be cheaper all right well suit yourself uh if you feel like you are adequ adequately protected, then <laughs> by all means, choose your own path. You, well, what can I get you, sir, with the gokos? Uh, Chuman snaps and out of his uh thought process, and oh, uh, I'll, I'll have some rum, if you must. You certainly do have the rum available. Coming right up. He runs over, grabs a glass, fills it. As he, as he does that, he, Chuman speaks up. By the way, you there was mention of snakes that was destroying the bridge from in the gorge. He, Care to spare any more information about that? Looks around, uh, gives you this nice little mug of rum. Uh, make a persuasion check, please. Kind of gives you like a like a 
like a smile on his face, but like a weariness in his eyes. <coughs> uh, and then nods. Oh, sure. Uh, it is an unfortunate thing to happen. The bridge was uh, destroyed, certainly. That much is true. But as far as what caused it, we're not so sure. The leading theory is that there are snake aberrations uh, that were spotted a, a little later after the destruction. It is hard to uh, <laughs> miss such a cacophony. But uh, we did not see them. We did not catch them in the act, you see. But it's just a theory. Uh, if we are, we have been acting on that theory. We've been posted uh, guards, sentries, you know. Uh, we had a pair of eyes over there, and uh, <laughs> nearly every finger. But yeah. haven't seen see. anything much. I see. Interesting. Schumann takes a sip of his drink and just l mm. looks at it for a little bit longer. Why would anything like Caleb takes a bit swig? Why would anything even care about a bridge? Of all the things to attack. Bridge above you. That is a very good question. Who knows? Maybe they just hate everything. I don't know. Nobody knows. But uh, if it is some kind of something living in the canyon, well, uh, that is the second part of what our plan is, that uh, <laughs> the illustrious Archie is uh, doing some think on, doing some brain work. Yeah, like it raises an eyebrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some kind of trying to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. The bridge is made out of stone, you are sharp. Kill like squints, tries to parse the idiom. Uh, thank you. Takes it this week. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, are they flooding the gorge? Oh, that went too much water. <laughs> nah, that would definitely be. Slides, perhaps. <laughs> be definitely too much water. But uh, I, I can say no more. Uh, <laughs> I would be uh, definitely dressed up uh, if I were to impart any more, uh, just to pass us by. Uh, it's something we like to uh, keep on the sly. Lest anybody, <laughs> lest anybody uh, pick our thunder. If you do wish to know more, I know that Archie is looking for volunteers and every once in a while we pass the opportunity to uh, perhaps people not such unlike yourselves. Uh, you appear that you can hold yourself in a scrap. Uh, I could extend the invitation. There could be a caravan for you. To a volunteer to test out your method, or your ride, or something else. Hmm. I, I cannot cackle on that to dodges. You ask Demios. Who and where? Well, I think it was you or your, your fine feathered friend earlier that was looking for him. Uh, he he does come here often, uh, but it is for dinner. <laughs> it is not dinner time. Uh, let's see, what time is it now? Uh, are you are either of you allergic to cats? Okay, uh, shakes her head. Human also shakes his head. Ah, well, 
Uh, you can, you may head to Bingo Bean. Uh, Damiel Smith's a client there, so perhaps you can catch him after. Think about it as a must. Uh, if you carry, if you carry yarns and gets, you know, like more comfortable in her seat. I think right now I wish to just take load off after a long week of traveling. Aye. Raptors are not particularly comfortable. The Uncle's Bluff is a fine place to do it. You're all welcome here. As long as you have silver. Kinda like holds up her uh her flagon in uh like a cheers and takes another swig. Human <laughs> minutes, so we can speak to him at, at some other point while we're still here. And for right now, some laid back piece would be quite uh would be much appreciated right now. Well JJ, best customers. We'll make beggars out of you uh soon fast. Saddle up. Welcome to the uncle's welcome to the uncle's bluff. And this fiery maned <laughs> for lack of a better word, uh gnome goes about just making sure you are well fed, well drunk, and uh cozy on your bar still. Um Kayla drinks probably a little too much alcohol. It's not particularly healthy. Your carousing will uh end up three silver for the both of you. Alright. I think for the most part human zips on like probably two mugs. <laughs> okay. Overall. Two silver for you. <laughs> so three for Michaela, two for Chuman. All right. Let's see here. Twig and Zalia. <coughs> in the, is in going... the city proper. Go ahead. Zalia is going goblin mode with respect to research. <laughs> All right. She's she's going to be in a room for fucking six hours. Mm -hmm. All right. Zaylee. Twig, you will be able to, if you are watching her the entire time. You will see her like throw a lot of like failed attempts at wings that attempted to be supplemented with magic, and they're gonna get better and better and better and better over six hours. But it's still gonna take six hours. Oh no, Twig's gonna offer to be a test subject. <laughs> <laughs> She will nod, like, oh yes, like, ah yes, bird, <laughs> easier. <laughs> so, yes, sh you will be a test subject. You will be the first subject of flight. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so yes, wings. <laughs> I've had some practice with this, with a buddy of mine in Luxnox. <laughs> uh, what spell are you casting again? <laughs> <laughs> She's just gonna cackle. <laughs> <laughs> On cue, <laughs> as that sentence leaves your leaves your mouth, Twig, and it is only answered by a cackle from Zalia. She gives you a brush on the shoulder, and uh, go ahead and uh, tell tell Twig what it looks like. Uh, the first time <laughs> the first time you cast it, it's got some exhaust on it. <laughs> but go ahead. Uh, do you have flinkers or, or do you have like arms? Uh, arms. Okay, so you're gonna get like a dual set of arm, like a, a dove set of limbs from the back of your shoulders that are basically the exact same color as you because she's being conscientious. Thank you. Same coloration as, as your normal plumage. And yeah, just full set of six limbed wings. Are they, is it like another set of arms or wings? It, it's wings. Oh. Um, yeah, fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, that's actually a reasonable uh, point of order. Uh, the intention was with actually wearing wings that she would just be using her own shape-shifting to do that. Um, but 
I don't know if she could necessarily give that to someone else per se, but it's funny, so she's gonna do it. Yeah, you can fetch any creature and it it, it happens as you describe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's your spell. Uh-huh. She's gonna act vaguely disappointed that they match you so well, actually. Twig's just gonna spend a couple moments like stretching out his new uh his new appendages, like looking at them. Huh? Trying to move them around. And he's just gonna say, well I've never done this before, but here goes nothing, I guess. Huh? And he tries to like hop up in the air and just hover like a few feet in the air. Okay. Like yep. So Twig, you kinda test your own weight a bit. This uh kinda like move up and down on your talents and then you just hop up. <laughs> just up. <hop. laughs> and uh, test your wings out and give it like a little flat and uh, you stay aloft uh, you look back and you can uh, feel these wings kind of like whoosh and just give this mighty flat keep, uh, keeping the uh, the lift or sorry generating the lift necessary to, to move you into the air uh, there is a bit of there's a bit of like a vernier to it <laughs> where like there's this kind of like rocket exhaust is coming out um from, from the feathers, which is, so there's like a kind of thing to it. Um, but yeah, it definitely, uh, Twig, you are flying. Um, is it okay that I'm smoking? Thalia shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna like head tilt, um, fucking minor illusion down. Is gonna try to make a graceful landing. Before long, but... the smoke fills the room. Delia <laughs> <laughs> has a bit of a manic, manic grin on her face. And it dissipates. Um, probably over the, over the next 10 minutes, uh, Twig, unfortunately. The spell ends, and you can no longer fly. Um, something exhilarating about it being able to propel yourself through the air uh, without having to do any sort of locomotion with your talons on the ground anyway so so Vayla's gonna go not a twig she's then gonna cast it on herself and she's gonna grow ink black ten like tendril wings sort of deal those are a bit they're a bit too long a bit too stretched out and instead of smoke they're gonna drip behind like just feathers smoky feathers, pure pitch black. And then she's gonna go flying. Who's outside. <laughs> oh no. Uh, You're leaving, Twig will follow along. Yeah. <clears throat> no, she, she's just going for a, basically a joy fly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Twig won't be able to follow along. Uh, since this is just experimentation, we haven't prepared the spell yet. Um, you'll get like a yeah. few feet into the air, and right. Uh, right. before something kind of kind of like goes wrong, like the the drippy uh, feathers just kind of like snaps, just just like uh -huh. how you often uh, like curl around your elbow. It does it to the wing this time, um, uh -huh. and just kind of like feel yourself like fo floating and falling to the ground. There's not enough lift to keep you aloft okay. and the arcane magic kind of like seeps out. Um, okay. But you feel like with a little bit more practice and experimentation, um, you should be able to properly prepare the spell and get the, okay. the incantations and the motions necessary to definitely get this going really nicely. Yep. He's, he's going to give Twig a thumbs up. <laughs> Twig will return the gesture. And then, since at this point, presumably like 1 a.m., she's gonna go find a place to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Huh. Let's see. I think we would uh, pan to Zoaz. Um, Zoas, what are you doing for the rest of the afternoon slash evening? Uh, probably trying to inform the rest of the group about 
you know, the situation trademark? The TM on the end of that? <laughs> You'd find uh, Kayla if you went back to the bar. There's like too many cups in. <laughs> She's gonna, she just gets very sleepy while drunk. Uh -huh. I've decided. Uh, Michaela, Schumann, mm. there's, uh, we might have a situation here. <laughs> so as the is... The situation is I'm running low on more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> as is fidgeting and, like, looking side to side. Well... Uh, He, like, leans over, like, trying not to be very loud and says, uh, Korokan may not have, uh, he may have lost the, uh, the thing we are escorting. Michaela just, like, blank stares at you. And is, like, trying to just, like, shake her head as if to, like, wake up her. Uh, could you repeat that, please? Uh, this is what clears his throat. <clears throat> uh, I believe Korokan has lost our package! Okay, yeah, like, tries to sit up straighter and, like, almost falls off the chair. Uh, that isn't good. So as vigorously like nods his head. Question. Vigorously nods his head. Where? How do you lose a large? I don't know. I don't know. He's so as probably thing. runs off to try and find Zalia and Twig. Right about now. I think that calls for another cup. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and do, go ahead and deduct two more silver, Michaela. <laughs> Will do. You're gonna be poor by the end of the session. <laughs> I mean, I still have three platinum and six gold. I'm fine. Mm. We're not done yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. <clears throat> so scrambling around. Uh... Make a do, 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 make a s yeah make a survival check Zoas looking for yeah. looking for the the pair not bad uh, you can you you think to to look around you don't see Twig uh, but you do think to uh, check the library for Zalia and you find them. Both in a room. Based you get on a the... soot fe... you get a soot feather right in the mouth. Yeah, based <laughs> based on the sound, you're like, oh, obviously the they're here. There's the commotion. You open the door, <laughs> soot feather in the mouth. It's like somebody, it's like somebody exploded a raven in here. Twig, <laughs> Celia, <laughs> you should have seen me. I was flying earlier. Can you believe it? Oh no. <laughs> So is, is like shakes his head and says, "Korka lost the package." Twig's kind of head tilts. Twig's face like freezes. He lost it. Vigorous nodding. As in, he doesn't have it anymore. He doesn't have it. <sighs> That's all right. We'll just have to go find it. Uh, he's, he's already looking, but, uh... I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of spooked. Where is Korokan now? Uh, He was by the Oasis, correct? Yes. So as we'll say as much. Right. What about... What about Michaela and the others? Where They're they? uh, at the tavern. Trying to find information? Shrug. 
<laughs> uh, I'm finding something at the bottom of this cup. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela says to no one in particular. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Drinks all straw, she can hear from a distance now. Mm -hmm. She's Twig's... having a good time. Twig's gonna remember something he heard when they were first coming into town, and he'll say to Zoaz, Let's go talk to some of the guards. Surely they might have seen something. Okay, okay. Stay calm. We'll have this fixed. Calm, okay, okay. I suppose the two of us are taking off to the guards. Bailey is going to have a sour look on her face and like snap a minor illusion of the guards with a stupid Groucho Marx glasses on. <laughs> uh huh. And she's gonna stick her tongue out. No, the long, completely black tongue. Hello? Hi. Hi. Tweak's gonna uh, go off with Zoaz then. Okay. I mean, Bailey will follow. She just doesn't like the guard and thinks they're useless. Okay. I mean, Zoaz does have a trick up his sleeve. Mm-hmm. See if um. I have enough spell slots for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Easy enough. You you find a uh, you find a guard. Let me. There you go. Boop boop. Find a pair of them. They're just hanging out, watching. Arms crossed. Scimitars at their sides. Kind of like looking around. They they look left. They check right. They look straight. Uh, they so say gonna... to each other. <laughs> so he's gonna try to get their attention. Okay, you hail them. Yeah, the, you've you've got their attention. Uh, it, it looks like they were just about to start playing cards. Like you, they've got like a pack of cards in hand, and, and some they pulled up like a couple barrels next to a um, next to like an overturned basket. Sorry, overturned cart. Big difference. Why? <laughs> so he's gonna like greet them and say, "Hey, uh, sorry to bother you, but would either of you happen to know anything about a, a Darby running around with some bag flash? Might have been borrowed recently." Oh, here comes the. Bailey is gonna look directly at quote at Twig like insane. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm the so insane as. one. <laughs> Uh, here comes the mobility. Querying about moon men? Ah. Do I look like a night magistrate? What's it to you? Oh, let's see. That Darby was my friend, so I was under the impression that we would leave our businesses alone here. They seem to kind of think a bit and look at each other. And then they like turn towards you and like on their barrels. So like they're not facing each other now, they're not facing you. Oh, you say you're given office. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dodgies after all. Well, you found some myrmidons. Uh, someone uh, nipped a nab and a nap and a napper and naps, or uh, what, what's? Who's your friend? Uh, what? What? Come on, out with it. What? The <laughs> if you're gonna be long tuned, uh, ain't got enough fingers for it, what? you know. Zoaz looks back and forth between them and sort of deduces what's going on and is going to snap his fingers. Uh, and a faint shimmer 
sort of fills the air. Just, like, it's, it's nothing super... It, it's not br too bright, but it's very noticeable. Um, the, uh, the air seems to fill with slight, with a slight sparkle, and Zoaz is going to say, uh, my client, a, an Aldani, he seems to have lost something. Do you know where it is? Is that, is that covering Twig too? <laughs> yes. Boy, well, what's this that they kind of like point up, let's like look up, look around. This is Selene's Grace, and you'd be wise to speak the truth while you're within it. I'll know if you're not. Boy, what do you take before we ain't no Knights of the Post? That's what we're here. We're... <laughs> They're just kind of like chuckling at each other. That, that ain't how this works. We're, regulations. If there are any Knights of the Knights of the Blade or or over the road, that's what we're here for to stop him. Says, hey. I will come well, clean. What's what? You mentioned it in Aldani. I saw. Uh, I should have just come into town today. Clapped a pair of eyes on him this this morning. I with your group. What is he? Uh, is he? Uh, oh, what's the word? No, <laughs> kind of like elbows him. <laughs> uh, is, uh, ba 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 ba. You know, I didn't pay attention to this one when Demios was was teaching us. No, I just remembered. Oh, is he leaving you in the lurch? Twig, uh, Twig shakes his head and says, no, nothing like that. We're just trying to help him out. He lost something of his. Hmm. Oh, I... Thinking someone may have borrowed it. Well. If any natty lads got along collecting your purses, woof. <laughs> That's against the regulations of, of good old trade task here. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for any reader merchants, but I ain't, we ain't seen nothing going on. Those frowns. Ugh. If something in, indeed has uh, been going on, it must be a, a rum diver. But <laughs> when we catch him uh, and deliver the score back, well, I think that's going to be a, a Roy Scraggum uh, Scrag fair. Zoaz looks Twig in the eyes and says, Can you translate? I could, but it might be seen as rude. Zoaz frowns. <laughs> So he looks to the guard and says, Look, we really need that bag flashback. Is there a fencing can around here? Or anything like that? There is. Uh, usually you've got to you've got to clear it. Um, but if it if it was uh, picked up from you then oh it might have already been uh, delivered to me, Uncle. Twig so just nods and says, I see. Well, let me know if you hear anything. Right. Uh, do you know what, anything about what the bloke or looked like? A uh, what, what sort of what sort of cove could have done the the napping? Twig turns to Zoez. Did he say anything about who he was who he was with or when he lost it? Zoez shakes his head. No, he's looking around the oasis right now. Perhaps it fell in the water, and or this is a misunderstanding. But uh, I hesitate to think that. So a merchant as experienced as him would just misplace an object so important. Twig just shrugs helplessly at the guards. 
Well, you've certainly given us a lot of information, but what, what, what sort of backflash is this? What, what are we looking for? Who are we looking for? Can you tell us anything at all to make anybody uh, squeak? Zaz doesn't. Zaz goes, oh, well, I don't know really what backflash is, but uh, if you, what you mean is what we're looking for, it's uh, some jewelry. A box with some jewelry in it. I suppose that's not very descriptive either, but. Uh, a, a box with jewelry in it that has just come into town is on this day should be a bit more speci specific can't be too many uh, jewelers coming through they just kind of look at each other they just kind of say yellow tin they just kind of nod at each other alright well Yelp heard. If we find the Zad, we'll make sure we give him. If we find the Zad, find the Varla, we'll make sure we, uh. Make sure he goes legit, I. Keep your wiper. We'll, we'll take a look. I think the Zad just helplessly looks at them. Make a persuasion check with a uh, with advantage. Uh, twig, <laughs> since Zoaz is helping you <laughs> with the illustrious uh, the illustrious truthy zone. Dang, nice advantage. Thank you. All right, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Oh my god, with advantage, huh? Yeah. Four and four. It's like Mario Party. If you roll two of the same, it gets doubled. Mm -hmm. You get ten coins, actually. Uh -huh. that's, that's, that's why I get eight. <laughs> Sorry, so I'm apparently lighting fireworks. Uh, maybe oh. five blocks away? From oh. Me. Directly hmm. south. So that's something. Zoaz, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so I just looks weirdly at at Twig. No, <laughs> never mind. Uh, unless what you mean the guards, in which case, yes, I am right here. We should probably go talk to Korakon. Maybe Indeed. we could help him find it. Rest assured, mites. Uh, no veil or nothing. That this is against the rules. We will, we'll definitely do our best because we've got rules to uphold, and that's what keeps Straight Tusk afloat. You know, uh, we'll find we'll find this this rapscallion. <laughs> we'll make sure they swing. Twig's a bit uncomfortable, but he said he just uh, nods to them. Thus, nods and says, "I thank you. Selene's blessings be upon you." And is going to start off, start going towards the oasis to look for Korakon again. Thalia's just been glowering at the guards the entire time. <laughs> Though you see him kind of like do this kind of like side high five, like or side five, and then like a like a back of the hand side five, and then like a fist bump, and then they go off ostensibly in search of whoever did this thing to Korakon. You hear them mention, <laughs> right, time to find a lolly prigger. The name. Mm -hmm. 
What's the plan? <laughs> uh, so I was heading off towards Korokon. Okay. Same with uh, Twig. All right. Meanwhile, uh, what's what's Chumin doing? <laughs> we know what Mikael uh, doing, but what's what's <laughs> Chumin doing? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be some Michaela drinking way too much. In fact, she casts Enhance Ability, Bears Endurance, to, get more, <laughs> <laughs> to drink more. She's like, it feels like she's at her limit, and then Sierra casts the spell on herself, and she looks ready for rounds. Uh, you've lost count. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I think two minutes is shock of seeing this, <laughs> for one. Mm -hmm. Um. I think. I think Chuman is actually going to walk around the area. That's after. Uh, having his pastiche, I guess. Watch Michaela in case she gets into anything crazy. Okay. So you're just gonna walk around the uncle's bluff? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Perception. Add a d4 to it, don't forget. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> 18. Okay. You walk around, you take a good perimeter of the uncle's bluff this this public house um watch many people come and go merchants dragging the raptors sorry leading um you see let's see here lots of people definitely um you see let me check my notes what time is it You see a purple tiefling. Um, just super ostentatious purple tiefling. Like they they're just bedazzled basically <laughs> from head to mm. toe and like jewelry. <laughs> like they've got like earrings and like chains and other danglies hey, even hanging off from their horns. Um, uh, just wearing this open chest vest. Um, there's like a, a sky blue tattoo on it. Um, or sorry. On oh, I think you, uh, I think, yeah, I think you just kind of Oops, tapped it. <laughs> uh, got it like a sky blue, like a cerulean color, um, tattoo on their chest. They've just got like wallet chains and like other dangly ropes and just jinglies all over their pants, uh, which are kind of like, kind of poofy, like kind of orangish. Um, you see them walk around a bit. Uh, it's, <laughs> they kind of like have a presence that demands your attention. And for a moment you just walk them. They walk past you, they walk into the, uh, they walk into the uncle's bluff. Uh, they're in there for a minute. Um, Michaela, give me a per perception check with... That's gotta be disadvantage. Yeah, with disadvantage. Schumann just kind of mutters under his breath. <sighs> just like at home. Mm. And then just kind of like, boop, 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 this mega ostentatious uh, tiefling comes in. Um, Michaela, you notice this person, like you... <laughs> they have a commanding presence where you just have to look at mm -hmm. them because they're, they're basically mm -hmm. a peacock. Mm -hmm. um, but they say like a couple things and it's uh, difficult to follow their con their kind of mini conversation. Um, the bartender yeah. slides them just a drink. It's uh, curious because you identify this as either as uh, something extremely clear, it's either water or just straight vodka. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then they nod and smile. 
but they don't drink anything about it. Uh, the, but but they don't they don't take a sip. <clears throat> uh, instead, they turn around and leave. Still holding the. Nope. Michaela the, shrugs. The glass Strange. is still there on the counter. Oh. Wait, they just leave the. Glass? Yes. That's true. Huh. And. Uh, customers. <laughs> Chuman, on your exit, uh, this person uh, moves past you. And now that you're very close to them, you've never been super close to this person um, up until now. And you can see with your keen eyes that this person has a tattoo that is not all too dissimilar from your own. Um, it's bright blue, uh, whereas yours is, um, I think, just kind of like sooty black, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they walk past you, not carrying anything. Um, uh, they appear to be uh, heading a little downtown. Uh, hmm. I think Chuma's gonna follow from a distance. Okay. Go ahead and make me a stealth check. Right, that section. Nice. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> 22. Very nice. All right. You managed to stay behind them a reasonable distance to where you're still able to follow them uh, without uh, drawing attention to yourself. And they walk through town. Um, they enter an establishment and uh, you're, you're there poised outside. You wait maybe five, ten minutes. They don't come out. You look at this place. Uh, it's, it, you, you look around um, and you see on the sign, uh, the sign is labeled the Bingo Bean. And it's got like a little kind of like a teacup. Mm. It's a little small, small little thing. It's not, it's not Omega big, but you do smell um, some nice stuff in here. Like it's a pleasing smell just around this area. It smells vaguely like coffee. This. Just as a verification, this was the same place that the bartender told us about, right? Uh, or is it a different name? Let's see. What is human's passive? Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, that, that's fine. Yeah, you'll be able to remember that. It's the same name. Okay. <laughs> Human just kind of scoffs over his breath. Oh, I guess I'll be... So I'll be checking out this place earlier than tomorrow. And human steps through to have a look around. Okay. Uh, in here, uh, this shop, like you, you actually walk past a cat, just kind of like cleaning its face on the ground. It's just hanging out on the stoop. Pays you no mind. Uh, you go into the shop. It's it's warm and it's it's kind of woody. Uh, it's dim lighting. There's this. It's it's kind of like here. Let me let me set the mood here. It's kind of like a dark oasis with warm orange table lights. There's this steamy scent of coffees and teas, kind of like wafting up with conversations. Um, you can see, like, there's an award uh, in the in the corner with, uh, like, the, the latest winning coffee flavor. Uh, you appear to be in a coffee shop, and you look around, and you see many different... Uh, um, many different cats as well. Like, there's, there's tabby cats, there's orange creamsicle cats, um, there's a Siamese cat just kind of, like, hanging out. You appear to be in a cat cafe. Of course, it's ahead of its time. <laughs> uh, 
and there's n is there anyone that's tending the area or is this all cats around yeah in fact uh one moment let me bring you to the map Da, 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 top the bottom line. Zoop. Uh, yeah, you, you come in. Looks like. Oh, I didn't preload anything. I forgot. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, you come in and here I'll drop everybody off uh, else off in here as well just so you can see just so we can yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you walk in there's like a little ding -ling -ling -ling. Um, and you can see that there is a uh, person here little gnome small glasses main fiery red hair little kind of like goatee uh, just hanging out next to a cat <laughs> brewing some coffee Uh, let's see. Two men walks over to one of the chairs and sits down. Uh, there is a cat on the out. table. <laughs> uh, attention distracted because he was initially pulling, trying to pull out paper. Uh, pets the cat. Gives it, Aww. gives it a smile. And it goes back to trying to pull out uh, some papers that he was carrying with. Uh, calls over to the bartender, or, well, not the bartender, but the head of the shop. Yeah. Oh, hello. Excuse me, sir. Hey. Welcome to the Bengal Bean. What can I get you? Uh. Oh. Well, Hmm. If you if you are unsure, I can definitely recommend the hazelnut. Sure. Yes, hazelnut sounds good. I'm coming right up. Mm. And they just kind of like pedal away. Let's go away. Uh, you... While that happens, Chuman kind of looks around. Uh, you look around, and, uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check. See how many you find. Michaela, no. Fine, okay. Just uh, this, I think, work. Yeah, you look around, and you find one, two, three, four apparent cats. Uh, all just kind of hanging out. There's one just on the floor. There's one on your table. There's one uh, on a chair. And then there's one like behind like a chair and a table just like peering at you from uh, behind one of the table legs. Uh, but you are the only patron in this uh, in this lobby. Okay. There's a couple closed doors. Um, and then there's also the uh, closed doors where the <clears throat> um, where the cafe proprietor went back um, you can see like a flight of stairs and it's just got like a international bathroom sign this way <laughs> alright uh Jimmy's just gonna wait till he comes back okay. with the coffee a few moments later plop down in front of you is a piping hot, very delightfully so, uh, smelling hazelnut coffee. Here you are, cause it's finest. Thank you, my good man. Uh, also, I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask. There was oh, someone nice. earlier that caught my eye. He seemed to have uh, maybe some knowledge that I'm looking for. Uh, have you seen anything resembling this and human puts down a kind of like, like a, ra a slightly ragged sheet of paper that shows the emblem of the phoenix mm. looks over he just gives it kind of like a like a 
cursory glance. Hmm. Sorry, I have not without ex without any expense. Mum's the word. Hmm. How much would you go for? It is quite important that I find some information regarding it. Whatever you feel this <laughs> salt is worth to you, uh, put down and I will appraise. Human looks away for a moment, gets into his bag, pulls out 10 gold, just looks back at the bartender. The bartender kind of like at this point they've got their circular pan like under under their arm there's like a little um hand towel over their wrist they're just waiting that's enough huh? if you want me to sing you've got to give me enough to overcome the possible show Well, if there is not a, if there is no floor to provide, how am I able to pro make accommodations? That is an excellent question, but unfortunately, it is not one that I have an answer for. Mm. I see. How about? 30 gold. Would that to give me any any details? Make a persuasion check with advantage. Not bad, 15. <clears throat> that was the DC. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Getting in. The the cafe owner uh, quickly makes a swipe with their hand towel over the thirty gold that you've laid down, and it is gone. Just whoop, and they look to you. Ah, oh, a fine choice. I will be right back with your coffee. She and... just silently nods. Thank you, my good sir. Let's see. Mm. The... While waiting, Schumann gives a little sip of the hazelnut coffee. Yeah. They're really impressed by the choice. Right. The This hazelnut coffee that you take a sip of, um, it's cooled down maybe a little bit, and it's definitely not like... It, it, <laughs> it doesn't taste hot, just like hot anymore, um, but now it's cooled down, you're able to get the kind of complex flavor that hazelnut coffee has. It's got this kind of like earthy, marbled, and then like it's got like this roasted tone on it. It's, it's sweet and this aromatic nutty taste. It also wafts into your nostrils and it kind of like gives you a little bit of a pep up just from, just from sniffing it because it is so pleasant. Um, there's a hint of uh, hazel uh, syrup smell on it as well. So you, you get the idea that this has been um, roasted by hand instead of, or laying in the syrup was added to it just over time and taken a lot of care for. And uh, as you are appreciating the coffee, out comes the uh, waiter, owner, out comes, out comes the gnome, and they give you a uh, glass of water, just plop it down, and they give you a nod, and then you can see them kind of like look around, they give you another nod, and 
Uh, I mentioned, be quick about it, please. Was there a direction of the nod, or is he just... No, he's just nodding towards you. Okay. You can see the glass of water is on kind of like a napkin coaster. It's uh, filled with ice. Schumann, you said there's a napkin that's underneath it? That's right. Uh... Schumann picks up the water and grabs the napkin, checks to see if there's anything underneath. There is a note in the, folded in the napkin. The note reads okay. something very specific. As you read the note, we're going to smash cut to the other side of the group. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are... We know what Michaela's doing. Michaela, Michaela is probably <laughs> like face down on the bar at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Michaela has actually been moved <laughs> to a to a comfy seat <laughs> next to the next to the kind of open fire pit. Uh, oh, nice. What kind? In her sleep. Around twenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is what? What are Twig, Zelia, and Zoaz doing? I know Zoaz is looking for Coracon. Yep. What are the other two doing, please? Zalia is just kind of following along. I, I, she wants to go to bed, but this seems important, so she, yeah. she's here. Yeah, Twig is going with Zoas as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll say that this is after... That, that's no. a, this is like one in the morning. <laughs> that all oh. of this is happening. Uh, like yeah, after, I mean... uh, after Zalia has completed her experiment. Yeah, um, it takes time. So, like, Truman, you're in this cat cafe that is open at one in the morning. It, it, and Twig, Zelia, and Zoaz um, are going to the Oasis. <clears throat> you... Let's see here. Who's at the Oasis at this time? Um, let's run over there and find out. There are plenty of tents, plenty of raptors just kind of rained together. Um, you do not see Coracon, at least right away. You see plenty of uh, plenty of raptors rained together. You see uh, it's kind of like merchant tents, people that have just set up camping for tonight. Um, there's that big kind of I gotta stop saying kinda <laughs> there's that mm. big picnic table that has the parchments and stuff exchanged one for no the other <laughs> that has parchments and uh, things kind of weighted down dang it did it again all right I gotta practice um, but no crab no crab okay no crab no crab listen Un unfortunately uh I mean, I assume that Zoas wouldn't need to roll, or wouldn't need to take a closer look to spot the crab. I feel like he's a pretty distinct uh, silhouette. You may, if you want to. Uh, sure. If, if you see. would like to see if you perceive an Aldani. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you look around for silhouettes of Nighttime. <laughs> of an Aldani merchant. It is dark, but you've got you've got dark vision, which would actually be a, a roll at disadvantage. Um, but no, they, they, you look around, you're not able to see them. Okay. <laughs> Considering you know, it can only go lower from there. <laughs> uh -huh. uh Zoaz lets out an exasperated sigh. <sighs> I can't find him. He was here. He was here when I when I saw him last. We could ask around. He's a pretty distinctive guy. Uh, yes, yes. That is a good idea. Um, there are still, like, plenty of people awake, right? 
Like they're out and about. You can see a couple, you know, a couple people that prefer the nighttime of the desert because it is much cooler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, you can see some people walking around. There's some silhouettes and tents. None of them look like crabs, but yeah, you can pull somebody. Who do you want? Um, let's ask some of the people who are like walking around outside. Okay. Um, so he's gonna, so he's gonna go up to them. A uh, minor illusion, like a small image of Korokan, and say, Hey, have you seen a guy like this walking around? Might have looked a little confused. Uh, let's see. Let's say you get like a little dwarf with a top knot. Uh huh. And he's got, he's got a smoker's cough. It's like, Hey, how you doing? Uh, that's, uh, I've seen that guy around. He was here earlier. Did you catch which direction he went? Uh, he went back into town, points. Went back into town with, with some little lady. A little lady? What did she look like? Uh, kind of... Uh... Kinda cute, college age, I guess. Big cloak. Give me one second, I'm just thinking. <laughs> the dwarf takes a bite of a sandwich. Loez, busy looking around unsuccessfully, catches only a little bit of the conversation and begins to imagine a college-age looking crab. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the help. We'll, we'll keep looking for him. Um, Twig's gonna catch up with Zoaz and Zalia and uh, let them know what he heard. This is going to be a hassle, isn't it? What's the plan? So he's gonna get going back into town. He wants to find Korakon. Yeah, so I was just following. Okay. Okay, we is re reluctantly following. <laughs> <laughs> She's dragging more than just two feet. Right. Let's see. I think as as Twig <laughs> and <laughs> as oh, no, Twig and Zoaz really uh, as Twig and Zoaz rush back into town, trying to find this Aldani merchant and just any whereabouts where where he has popped off to. As Chuman unfolds the napkin or uh, unfolds the napkin and pulls a note out and reads its contents as uh, Zalia drags further and further as she does not possess the same worried feverish adrenaline as her companions I imagine um, she never does <laughs> there is a tug on your cloak Zalia and as you turn around, an eye around a lot. She's not turning around. She's just spinning an eye. Okay. As you spin an eye to turn around, there is a gnome there with kind of blue hair, huge, like chop, mutton chop sideburns, and they push into your hands just a a, a parcel, like a wooden box, like a rectangle. And they mutter to you, 
I hope this makes up for all the birthday presents I missed. And they totter off. Zaylee's gonna fucking double take. And that's where we're in tonight's <gasps> session. <laughs> that's rude! Excuse me? Wait a minute. That's so rude! 